Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the endodontic anatomy of the permanent mandibular canine. So watch this lecture till the end. This is the mesodistal outline of the permanent mandibular canine. Bulb chamber and the root canal, they are similar to that of the maxillary canine. But as the tooth it is a smaller in size, therefore the pulp chamber and the canal, the dimensions, they are smaller mesiodistally as well as labiolingually. A single prominent pulp horn is present. The mesiodistal dimension of the pulp chamber, it is a smaller and then there is a gradual taper of the canal towards the root apex. So in the apical one third, the constriction of the single canal, it is marred and the canal, it usually open at the apex of the tooth, but sometimes it opens slight mesially or, dist or distally. This is the labiolingual dimension, uh, labiolingual outline of the maxillary canine. So, from in the labiolingual section, the, the dimension of the pulp chamber, it is more as compared to the mesiodistal dimension. The pulp horn, it is prominent. There is gradual narrowing of the pulp canal and in the apical one third and in the apical one third there is a marked constriction in the single canal and the canal it usually open at the apex of the root. Sometime a lingual or labial opening is also present. Variations in the endodontic anatomy are common in the mandibular anterior teeth. So among the mandibular anterior teeth, the incidence of a second canal is comparatively very low uh, in the mandibular canine. So now what are the what is the common variation? The pulp chamber, it is the same. The only difference is they are in around on average six percent of the mandibular canines they has two root two root canals. This is the first root canal, and this is the second root canal. So in between these two root canals that are usually exit through separate apical foramen, there is a dentinal tissue in between. So there is a dentinal tissue in between and usually they exit through the separate apical foramen at the apex of the tooth. So this is the first canal. Sometimes they have a uh, the, the canals, they unite at the apex as well, but usually they exit to separate canals. So this is the first canal and this is the second canal. The cross-sectional anatomy. So in the cross-section at the cervical area, the outline is of the root is a bit rectangular to oval and the shape of the canal it is usually it is oval which is smaller than the maxillary canine but it is centered within the dentine. Now in the apical portion of the root the shape of the root it is more rounded and the canal, it is also rounded. This is a single canal. 
and it is rounded. So with advancing age, because of the deposition of the secondary dentine and tertiary dentine, uh, there is narrowing of the pulp chamber and the canal. So now with advancing age, the size of the pulp chamber and the canal is reduced. And I'm drawing the canal, uh, the chamber and the canal with a pulp with a purple color. So the pulp horn, it is nearly obliterated or it disappear. And the size of the pulp chamber and the canal, it is reduced. Similarly, in the labiolingual section, the pulp horn, it is now very blunt. It is not sharp anymore. And the size of the pulp chamber and the canal, it is also markedly reduced. There's a mark reduction in the size. Similarly, in the cross section, at the cervical area, the pulp, the size of the pulp, cap, uh, pulp canal, it is reduced, and in the apical area as well. So this is the labial side, and this is the lingual side. The labiolingual dimension is more as compared to the mesiodistal dimension. So this is all about the ended basic endodontic anatomy of the permanent mandibular canine. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Do subscribe to our channel and follow our Instagram account at Dental Edu Hub for questions, images, and flashcards. Again, thank you very much for watching and stay blessed.